Welcome back everyone to Planet Linux. The KDE Plasma Desktop has long been known for providing a traditional default experience that's familiar to navigate whilst also being infinitely customizable with all sorts of settings and themes that can transform your desktop into just about anything you could imagine. Well, I recently began using KDE again and want to showcase the journey that I took when customizing my desktop from the default to an end result that is highly customized to suit my needs in order to detail some of the numerous ways that you can make the Plasma desktop truly yours. You can apply all the concepts I show here to either give your desktop a similar look or take things in a totally different direction. Now I'm running Manjaro with the KDE desktop here, but really any distribution running a recent version of Plasma, such as Kubuntu, KDE Neon, or Fedora KDE should work just fine here. Now the first thing here is getting a new theme. While the default breeze theme does look decent, we can definitely find some sleeker options. Now the Plasma desktop has separate themes for different aspects of the system, such as the application window style, the window title bars and buttons, the plasma panels and widgets, icons, etc. But to simplify installing new themes for all of these different components, there are global themes which include theming for all, or at least most, of the various components. In the system settings, you can use the Get More Global Themes button or the corresponding button for any individual components to browse and install user-submitted themes. Here I've done exactly that, having installed a few of them, and ultimately decided to use this Orcus Dark theme. Now, the one component that isn't included in this global theme pack is the Cavantum theme, which we'll cover more later but it's essentially what provides improved application theming along with transparency and blur effects. Fortunately, many of these theme creators provide a link to download the Cavantum theme, including this one, so I'll grab that file now and extract it so that we have it for later. Now that I have my global theme, I'll apply it and accept that it will change the theme of numerous components. And you can see that it has installed and applied the theme for all the various components of the desktop. And already this is looking pretty nice. But this theme does support some nice blurred transparency effects that we're not seeing yet courtesy of the Cavantum theme engine, so I'll install that next. Well, technically it's translucency, not transparency. Transparency would imply that something is completely see-through like a sheet of glass, where translucency... eh, never mind. Anyway, the method of installing the Cavantum Theme Manager will depend on your distribution, so I've included a link in the description to the program's GitHub README page, which provides distro-specific instructions to either install the pre-built package or build it from the source code. Here on Manjaro, it's available in the standard repositories, so I'll install it through the Add Software app. Once installed, make sure the Cavantum Theme archive that was downloaded earlier is extracted to a standard folder. Then open the Cavantum Manager application, select install slash update theme, click on select a Cavantum theme folder, and choose the newly extracted theme folder that we downloaded. Then we'll click install this theme, then navigate to the change slash delete theme page where we can pick the newly installed theme from the dropdown. Once we click use this theme, then we just need to apply this to the application style by opening system settings, going to appearance, application style, and then applying either the Cavantum or Cavantum Dark option, depending whether we're using a light or dark theme. In this case, it's the Cavantum Dark. Now this provides some nice transparency, or rather translucency, to certain apps like the File Manager, as you can see here. Looks pretty nice. Next, to modify a couple window effects. In System Settings, under Workspace Behavior, then Desktop Effects, there are all sorts of modifications that you can make to desktop functionality, such as enabling screen zoom or window effects, such as wobbly windows and changing the minimize animation, which is what I've decided to do here. At this point, if you like the current layout of everything and just wanted a new theme, then you should be all set and can stop here. But there's so much more that can be customized with KDE, so we'll continue. Now KDE provides limitless possibilities for customizing the layout of the desktop and adding functionality through the use of plasmoids, which are essentially widgets for the desktop and the panel. So you can try all sorts of things here, but I'll detail what I've decided to do. I start by moving the bottom panel to the top of the screen, 
This is done by right-clicking and entering edit mode, then grabbing the drag bar and moving it to the top. I then spend a couple minutes moving the existing plasmoid components on the panel around a bit, getting a layout that I'm happy with. Now I want to have the menu bar of application windows always appear in the top panel rather than in each application window. To achieve this, I'll add the global menu plasmoid by selecting add widgets and then dragging it to the panel, then configuring the spacing of everything around it properly. There, I think that looks pretty good. Now I want everything to be even more space efficient by removing the title bar of a window entirely and moving its title bar controls to the top panel whenever it's maximized to full screen. This functionality isn't built into KDE by default, but we can easily get an applet that puts the window controls in the panel. This applet includes a README with instructions to install it on various distros, again that link is also in the description, but in Manjaro or any Arch-based distro you can get it from the Arch user repository. I'll then add it as a widget to my panel, so I'll put it at the top right. I'll then configure the order of the window buttons and for them to only show when the active window is maximized. There we go, they seem to be working as expected. Now we just need to remove the now unnecessary title bars whenever a window is maximized. Again, there isn't a specific setting for this in KDE, but we can get a pre-made script that applies the necessary changes. To do this, we'll go back into System Settings, then to Window Management, then KWIN Scripts. Click on Get More Scripts and search for the one either called Truly Maximized or Hide Titles. Truly Maximized includes a couple of settings that can be adjusted, but either of them should do the trick. Install one of these, then make sure it's ticked on, and apply it. Now when we maximize a window, the title bar and controls will disappear, and the window controls should still appear in the top panel that we set up earlier, providing a nice full screen experience. Finally, I'm going to make some adjustments to the terminal. Opening up console, the default terminal emulator for KDE, I first want to make the background slightly translucent like some of the other windows. To do this, I'll go into the Settings menu, then choose Create New Profile. I'll name it accordingly and tick to make it the default. While I'm in here, I'll adjust the default window size, then I'll go to the Appearance page and edit the color scheme to enable a blurred background and reduce the opacity a bit. Finally, I increase the default font size a bit. After applying everything, I can switch over to the modified profile from the Settings menu. There, that looks a bit more like what I want. Now, do pardon the wallpaper change here, I did that off camera. The last thing I want to do in the terminal is change the interactive shell. This is essentially the environment or the interface that you interact with when typing in the terminal. By default, most distros use a shell called Bash, and Minjaro here uses one called ZSH but I want to use one called Fish, which is short for Friendly Interactive Shell, which provides a lot of nice features when typing in the terminal. Fish is available in most distro repos and can likely be installed through the respective software manager. Once installed, it can be set as a default terminal profile in the Configure Profile page under General by setting the command to slash bin slash fish. If that doesn't work, you may have to use slash usr slash bin slash fish. Now, whenever a terminal is opened, it will default to using Fish instead, which has a lot of great features that I'll be sure to cover in another video. Now, I am fully aware that Fish can be set as a default shell for the entire system, not just this specific terminal profile, but doing that can definitely cause some issues with system configurations being adjusted, or certain scripts that are expecting to run in Bash not working properly. So for this reason, I've chosen to only have Fish run when I'm actively using the terminal, not for the entire system. So that just about completes my KDE Plasma customization experience. I'd like to hear how you like to customize your Linux desktop. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you've found some of these steps useful and can apply some of them for your own desktop. If you did find this useful and enjoyable, then a like is greatly appreciated. And stay updated with the latest content, I'd appreciate you subscribing to the channel and marking the notification bell.
Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux.